of impact. We start this session with our humble regards to Mr. S.K. Birla, President of Shikshayatan Foundation, Board of Governors, Honorable Trustees, and Core Committee Members of CBS. And we are honored to have the kind presence of Mr. Saurav Ghosh, Senior Advisor, Shikshayatan Foundation, and Dr. Vijay Nimbalkar, Principal of Calcutta Business School. Also to be mentioned is Mrs. Dathati Bhattacharya, who could not join uh, yet. Maybe she'll join a little later. We are delighted to have as guest speaker today, Ms. Priya Mudia, President, Patton Group, and I shall be telling more about her shortly. Dr. Pinaki Ranjan Bhattacharya, Associate Professor, Calcutta Business School, shall be conducting this session today as moderator. Joining this meet today, are the faculty members and students of Calcutta Business School and many other institutions. This event is being live streamed on Facebook for our viewers, as well as we have joinees on the Zoom webinar and they can interact with our speakers through their respective platforms. May I now request Vijay sir to please deliver the welcome address. Good evening, everyone. Uh, respected uh, Mr. Saurav Ghosh sir, uh, Bratati Bhattacharya, Madam, Ms. Priyam Bodhiya, and my dear faculty colleagues as well as students, I take this opportunity to welcome Ms. Priyam to this webinar and to understand what entrepreneurship is all about and especially what it means for a woman because as such, the path is very less traveled by men and women equally but especially when it comes to women, you see, people have many, let's say, questions in their mind that how come a woman can start with an entrepreneurship, though we have very successful women entrepreneurship as Kiran Shamajundar, Falguni Nair, etc., to name a few. So once again, I welcome Madam Ms. Priyam to this webinar. And I look forward to a very enriching session, interactive session from everybody's point of view. Also, I request, Madam, that we have this PGDM student and as and when Madam would require students for winter internship or summer internship, I would urge Madam to give them some live projects so that students can learn a lot and they can help the pattern group as well as I can fly. So I look forward to this interactive session. And once again, I welcome Ms. Priyam to share her experiences. Welcome, Madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I now request Saurabh, sir, to please set the tone for the day. Good afternoon to everybody present in today's program. Hearty greetings to Ms. Priyam Budhia, president of Patent Group, and co-founder of Cafe I Can Fly, who has kindly agreed to be with us to share her experiences and of her impactful journey despite her busy schedule. I greet Mrs. Bratati Bhattacharya, Secretary General and CEO of Shikshatan Foundation, Principal of CBS Professor. Nimbalkar, panelist Professor Pierre Bhattacharya, other esteemed faculty members of Calcutta Business School, our dear students, and all others who are with us today. I am really pleased to inform that in our career development workshop series, Center of Excellence, organized by Calcutta Business School. Here we invite stalwarts and doyens in various fields to inspire our students on developing their career building aspirations in areas where the speakers themselves have excelled. Narrations of their experiences will definitely motivate our students, keeping in mind their personal preferences, values, 
aspirations, limitations to create a development plan for their own individual career. The time is most opportunity, sorry, the time is most opportune now as you are students who are always exploring, engaging, experiencing, and viewing new opportunities with open mind. Coming to how to create a development plan for your career, briefly I can say, number one, assess your current situation. You all know where you are. Two, identify your desired journey and end point. Three, perform a gap analysis. Number four, create a roadmap with smart objective. Smart being specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Number five point is identify the obstacles. Six is regularly review and evaluate, make course correction as and when necessary. Establish your career path and follow with commitment and diligence so that you can reach your destination. Therefore, to help creating a career development plan, it is very important to listen to success stories of eminent persons who have followed their dreams and achieved laurels in their respective fields. Their life journeys will inspire you all. They can be your mentors and guides. So here I am certain that deliberations of Ms. Priyam Budhia regarding her impactful journey in life will definitely motivate our students to make a career in business development, strategy, sustainability, entrepreneurship, and socially relevant initiatives that benefit our society at large. With this and without any more delay, I wish all well. And now over to Ms. Madhusri Paul for the next part of the program. Thank you, sir. Shikshayatan Foundation, the apex body of Calcutta Business School, was established to provide quality education to women, which would ultimately lead to their empowerment. And under its aegis, Calcutta Business School has always created new pathways to groom young men and women in overall leadership skills, and especially in the field of business and management. And thus, it is indeed a special day for us to have a young and dynamic entrepreneur who is setting a stellar example for women across the globe, as well as the aspiring young business enthusiasts of the world. Gen Next of Patent Group, Ms. Priyam Budhia joined the family business after her professional experience at Lemon Brothers and Barclays Capital, London, UK. As president, business development, she spearheads the plastic vertical. Representing Patton and India globally, she won the Family Business Network Next Gen Lombard Odia People's Choice Award 2020 for her entrepreneurship project, Embracing Green. Her project concentrates on water conservation initiatives, water on wheels, and rainwater harvesting to empower women and children in rural India. At Patton, she also launched the innovation vertical that developed the contactless safe hand wash station to fight against COVID-19. Passionate about breaking the stigma around mental health care, Ms. Priyam heads the new initiatives at Caring Mind Institute of Mental Health. She is the co-founder of Cafe I Can Fly, run by special needs individuals and the director at Ad Life Fitness and Health Spa. 
Ms. Priyam has spoken on multiple platforms such as TEDx, Oasis Asia, Oasis India, and is the only woman from Eastern India to be featured in the British Council inspiring UK alumni documentary. She has been the proud recipient of There's a technical glitch. I think Mudusri has got some more technical glitch at some place. Uh, is Sunil there? Sunil should take care. She's in she's in foundation. Just I'm good. I'm just making uh, yeah. I think Madhushri is in Shikshadan and probably she has lost connection. Meanwhile, I think we should start the program. Uh, PM, well, uh, we have been discussing or speaking to each other for a long time, right? And hopefully, you know, ultimately today, we have ultimately been able to fix up our time and hear from you, right? Your journey all this while. And uh, the first thing which I would like to ask from you, and welcome to this show or this webinar from my side and my regards to the Committee member Mr. Saurav Ghosh and Principal Dr. Nimalkar, and uh, to you also as well. Okay, well, welcome to you. Now, you have been doing your, have done your higher education in the outside the country, right? And uh, your initial professional experiences, as we have heard, was all in UK, right? What made you to come down to India, first of all? Okay, uh, the first part is. What made you to come down to India to return, return to your roots, right? And secondly, how did you cope up when you came back? Thank you so much. Uh, how did you cope up? Yeah. Sure. So thank you so much, um, Dr. Bhattacharya. I would firstly like to thank uh, Calcutta Business School for having me here today this evening. Um, respected Dr. Nimbalkar, uh, Mr. Ghosh, Dr. Bhattacharya. It is uh, our pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Absolutely. And also, uh, Ma'am Pratiti Bhattacharya, who, who could not be uh, here today on this webinar. It's my pleasure to be here and interact with all of you senior professors, as well as all the students who have joined in onto this program. And I'm also very happy to hear that this is being recorded and will be live on the Facebook channel of Calcutta Business School. So those who miss it can also, you know, uh, benefit from it later. Already live. They're seeing it already. <laughs> Great. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so coming back to your question um, about um, my, you know, my journey, my story, which yes. started in the UK and then coming back to Calcutta. Right. So... Let me first give you a little background. Um, I'm a Cal completely a Calcutta girl. I did my um, studies in Calcutta, went to Loreto House and then to La Martinier for my grade 12. Thereafter, I went to the UK to study. Uh, I was in the UK for seven years. I finished my management studies at the University of Nottingham. Okay. Thereafter, I was doing some management and entrepreneurship courses at the London School of Economics. Um, Right after that, you know, I um, wanted to always be in a fast-paced city, in a fast-paced working environment. And okay. I felt that, you know, banking was something which would be very exciting. Okay. Um, I did not want to come back to India already. I wanted to sort of prove to my own self that, you know, I could get a job in a foreign country, in a strange land where no one knows me, where I don't know anyone. And, you know, I can, you know, sort of make my country proud in a different country. Okay. So that's how I applied for multiple jobs. And I landed myself a job with one of the top most investment banks at that point of time, which was Lehman Brothers. Okay. 
I yeah. was with Lehman Brothers in 2008. Um, I was there for literally just one week, uh, mm -hmm. September 2008, 8th of September, I started my job and 15th of September, I was asked to leave. Just okay. to clarify, I wasn't the reason why the bank went down. On a lighter note, this was the global uh, financial crisis. Right. And, um, you know, the, right. the bank had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And, right. um, you know, the bank collapsed uh, due right. to you know, everything that was going around at that point of time. Right. It was absolutely impossible for, you know, me to sort of get a job again in in the banking sector because it was it was the global meltdown you know it was a global financial crisis however i feel that after losing my job and I, I just kind of for one day i spoke to myself that you know i was this young girl who had gone back home for the summer after graduating and i was looking forward to starting my first ever job ever in my life you know okay. in london in lehman brothers very right. excited and one week into the job i lose that job so, you know, that one day I was very like, I sort of went through a whole um, pendulum of emotions, literally from like being sad and shocked and why me, um, you know, what, what did I do wrong to have lost this job? I'd worked so hard for it. Um, but then, you know, I told myself that I could either go down into this bottomless pit of emotions and feel sad, or I could bounce back. I could mm -hmm. positively motivate myself tell myself that, hey, listen, it's not only you who've lost this job, there are many others who've also lost this job. And if I would be continue being sad and sort of, you know, regret what happened, I would only be wasting my time. So, you know, it just took me that one day and the next day, 16th of September, 2008, you know, I woke up fresh with a cup of hot coffee and mm -hmm. I sat down and applied for, you know, many more jobs. Mm -hmm. Without exaggeration, I was jobless, for almost four months, all okay. of half of September, all of October, November, December, January. But I did not give up, you know, okay. for I applied for almost 200 jobs without exaggeration, went okay. for the final rounds of interviews with the topmost companies like Goldman Sachs, McKinsey, you know, you name them literally like all those companies. And um, for some reason or the other, it was the wrong time. I was in the wrong place. But um, you can say I was, you know, maybe consumed. I was obsessed. I was possessed. I don't know what happened to me. But I told myself that I am not giving up. I am not going back to India just yet. I will prove it to myself, prove it to everyone that I can get myself a job back. You know, and at that point of time, you know, to, to live in London, it's expensive. So um, I was living literally from a hotel to a motel to a bed and breakfast place, to an inn. I was moving to the cheapest accommodation available to be able to sustain my life. And, um, and, and also I'd like to say that I wasn't taking any money from my parents. Um, okay. I was doing these sort of, you know, odd part-time jobs, literally from selling softy ice cream on the streets of London, uh, selling newspapers on the streets of London. You know, I was also uh, working at the local grocery to make my buck. These are some secrets which I've shared with all of you today. A lot of people don't know about this. Some okay. of my family doesn't know about this as well. Okay, okay. But, um, this is how I was making my buck, you know, to live that life in London. And yeah. um, finally, you know, you reach that point where your family is literally calling you every day. They think that, you know, this girl has gone crazy four months and, you know, she's still going on, um, you know, come back to India, join the business, do something here. You have a good home here. Um, Somehow, you know, I had got that ultimatum from my mother that this is the last job interview you're going for. And this was the 3rd of March, 2009. This is like a movie when I see this story. Um, and this is my interview with Barclays Capital. Um, I went for my interview. I came back and that was the only interview which, you know, like after you prepare so much for 200 interviews, finally you reach the stage where you're like, what happens you know i didn't prepare that much i was like we'll see you know right. I'm, I'm okay like i'm confident we'll see what happens i came back that day i was in the call with my mom and literally she was like i hope you're you know i hope you're ready to come back and i hope you're all packed up and you know uh, your flight's booked for tomorrow literally i got a call from you know barclays at the same time Okay. And, uh, you know, it was a call wait from Barclays HR saying that we're happy to let you know that you have landed yourself the job with Barclays and you can start in March 2009. And oh. I can't express to you 
you know, my world was literally like, I was like, oh my God, like I've been toiling for this for four months. It's only because of my determination, my willpower, not giving up, having that faith in my own self, um, literally turning a deaf ear, you can say to, you know, sometimes they say that um, you should not follow the advice of your parents. I did not follow the advice of my parents for this one time, but, um, you know, in a way, honestly, they were a very big moral support for me because they were just being protective parents, you know, calling me back to India. But at the same time, they were supporting me in their own way, you know, of doing what I was. So um, I landed myself a job at Barclays, a really happy moment for me. And um, that's how, you know, my, my career took off. And I was with Barclays for two years um, from 2011 to 2011, or 2009 to 2011. And uh, after finishing my two years with Barclays, I was working there uh, as uh, an operations analyst. So working very closely with the sales and trading uh, teams in the front desk. Um, thereafter, I uh, finished my two years with Barclays and that's when they, they really liked me, you know. So they wanted to make me, a, you know, offer me a permanent job with them after the two-year scheme. But I sort of figured that, you know, banking, it was a great experience, no regrets. It was, I learned so much, it was amazing. But I figured that banking was not me. You know, I was somebody who was much more creative, entrepreneurial, um, and this black and white world of banking, I, I just felt that I was made for something, you know, more, and I wanted to be my own boss and sort of, you know, I, I was looking towards enterprise. And um, that's when I felt that India is the hotbed of opportunity and um, it lays in the East and it was the best time for me to come back to India and um, do two things. One is to join my dad and my grandfather in the family business, which is a legacy family business. And it's been there for over 50 years. And I felt that, you know, um, I didn't want to be just another drop, you know, in the ocean that I come and, you know, just sort of join the business, which is going on. Um, I've, I've always been, a, you know, a woman with uh, who wants to establish her own identity, have my own individuality. And that's where, when I came back, I sort of, you know, wanted to uh, do something which was, you know, my own. Um, so that's where I call it, you know, uh, in the family business, in pattern group, what I do, I call it intrapreneurship. So, you know, it's in an existing setup. So I call it intrapreneurship um, because I started the sustainability and the innovation verticals in the company. Um, I also, you know, head the plastics division in the company. So for the benefit of, you know, those, uh, the students who are here with us today and who, uh, you know, may know a little bit, but I'd like to share. Um, our family business pattern group is basically, it's, um, it's, you know, an over five decade old uh, family business, which was started by my grandfather and then taken to the next level by my father. And I'm um, the next, next gen. Um, we are into plastics and steel. So when I say plastics, we basically are into plastic, uh, water storage tanks, PVC pipes, dustbins, crates, pallets. This is entirely for the domestic market for India. Uh, and I head the plastics division. Besides that, we are also into steel fittings. So we manufacture um, steel fittings like compression connectors, lock nuts, couplings, hangers, and um, this is entirely for exports. So we export this to, you know, Middle East, uh, US, Canada, Mexico, all of that. And, um, you know, I, I head business development for the steel division and I look after the plastics division besides my sustainability initiatives, which I'll talk about as we go along. Um, so this is entrepreneurship in the family business. And I also joined my mom um, where I do social entrepreneurship with her, which again, you know, I'll share more details as we go along. So this is sort of in a nutshell, my journey uh, in the UK, the transition from moving back from the UK to India, and then the bits and bobs I do now when I'm in India. And I'd like to highlight that I've been back in India for almost 10 or 11 years now. Um, you know, one may ask that, was it easy for you to move back to India? To be very honest, because I was in the UK for seven years and those were the formative years of my life. Um, you know, moving back to India and noticing a very different culture here, be it, you know, personally or living with family once again. I was living completely alone, you know, when I was, you know, studying there, working there. So, you know, living with family again, um, so many people in India, you know, uh, you know, and abroad you get used to just, you know, living an independent life and all of that. And again, a very different work ethic, a culture, very different here. So for two years, I was definitely, it was a transition. It was very tough to, you know, kind of rewire myself and all of that. But I think, you know, nothing happens overnight. 
you have to have resilience you have to have patience um, and you have to not give up and those are the things i've always stuck by in my life and after those two years you know it's it's just been an upward journey and uh, now when i look back i'm so happy that i moved back because i've been able to touch so many lives in so many different ways and do so much so uh, it's 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 amazing it's been an amazing journey uh priyam i think uh, i think uh, what we have heard from you is absolutely fantastic you know because what you said is really something i mean to be adore, not only adorable but we saluted because as you said joined in 70s time you were left without any job and the hardship which you faced all this while the determination which you had the will power which you had uh, probably guided you to this level and the inner self which you had the inner reading the inner the inner learning probably right which is more important for a human being so i learned it the same way what you told me okay, the confidence is oozing out of your faces you know when you are saying all this i could i could look, look at it right and now i have got a question from my student koshiki she will ask you a question koshiki was raising her hand koshiki are you there yes sir i am there yeah. please you are raising your hand please ask the question to ma'am uh yes sir yes sir. good evening yeah. ma'am good evening hi koshiki uh hi ma'am uh, so yeah ma'am i had a question for you like um the way you explain all the thing so i just wanted to know like challenges are often opportunities in disguise uh so ma'am uh, would you please share your professional experience of turning adversities into opportunities yeah sure thank you for the question it's actually one of my favorite questions because you know like as you as i explained to you my journey um i love i love uh, troubleshooting i love problems because i feel that every problem is you know an opportunity for each one of us to look at a new day in a new way uh, and come up with innovative solutions and that's how you know society community the world uh, our country progresses right because if if it was all a straight line uh, life would be so boring so it's because issues come up problems come up we we think of you know new ways of solving those problems that's what makes life so exciting and so interesting so thank you for that really amazing question koshki um you know so coming to the challenges i think i'd like to the most you know the one which is the highlight of my career i've already mentioned um you know first was the global financial crisis in 2008 and now when we look at the global health crisis um you know covid which hit us 3 years ago and uh, we're almost and hopefully coming out of covid uh, situation now so you know when covid 19 hit us and obviously everyone was impacted i think every individual every business every sector every industry uh, was impacted excepting education and healthcare which is sort of a recession proof sector but um, you know in our business in pattern as well uh, obviously when the whole city was in lockdown mode um a lot of our factories were shut down and uh, i mean we had to you know temporarily shut it all down um for about a month and a month and a half and then we all bounced back and you know slowly slowly things started opening up so again at this point of time you know one can just sit down and say that oh you know so now chutti ho gaya you know let's let's sort of you know it's a holiday and it's you know we can just you know do nothing much and um Uh, one can just be on that holiday mode or one can think that oh you know wow so let's look at this in a positive way we have this one month time when factories are shut when um, you know there is no manufacturing no production uh, there's nothing happening on that front but this was the best time for us to sort of as a company become more um, uh, sort of improve our processes our systems uh, embrace technology um and sort of make our organization more more lean more mean make it more systematic um because the, you know i think honestly when you look at a traditional family business um people believe in doing meetings more face to face you know uh, physically face to face and it's it's the same case you know in my family business in many other family businesses which i have seen i've spoken to so many people in calcutta and india as well they just feel ki you know आमने सामने बात करेंगे तो और अच्छा मीटिंग होगा यू नो इट बी बेटर दैट्स हाउ वी सी फील इट बट आई थिंक कोविड इज टॉट अस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लेसन दैट जस्ट फॉर दैट वन मीटिंग 
you don't need to travel all the way to Delhi, uh, you know, for that meeting. It's it's Zoom, be it you know Microsoft Teams, be it Cisco Webex. You know, today we're doing this webinar, and in fact, the power of technology. How so many more people, you know, literally not just in Calcutta but India, but maybe from the globe, people could be watching us today, um, can join on an online platform. So literally, not our age group, but I think people of my father's age group, from my grandfather's age group. They were forced to learn and embrace technology and make, you know, platforms like Zoom their best friend. Um, so it was a great way to embrace technology. That's one. Second thing I would like to really highlight upon is that, uh, you know, we came up with a new product amidst COVID, uh, which is called the contactless uh, safe hand wash station. So this is essentially, it's a hands-free foot operated product. As I mentioned, we've already been in the business of water storage, water management solutions. So what we did was we made this MS stand because we, we manufacture steel. We placed a water storage tank on top of that stand, which is a 200 liter or a 500 liter water storage tank. Uh, we put a bin, you know, in uh, like, a, like a bin in, uh, next to it. And um, this, this bin would have liquid soap. Then we put a basin in front of it. We put a tap. Yeah. And we put pedals. So now we assemble this whole unit together. So when you press one pedal, the liquid soap comes out from the bin into the basin. When you press the other pedal, water comes out from the tank into the basin. So this is essentially to uh, promote efficient, safe hand washing before you enter any public place. And I'm happy to say that we introduced this product and all of this was done, you know, um, sitting at home, many like on, you know, WhatsApp groups, many phone conversations. We developed so many prototypes to finally come up with this model. And we've been able to have really prestigious clients in Calcutta. Um, we've, you know, distributed this to, um, you know, places like the Kolkata Port Trust, uh, mm. also the Indian Army, the Indian Navy. We've installed this at hospitals fighting COVID, such as Medica. Super Speciality Hospital, the Cancer Research Institute, Indian Institute of Cerebral Palsy, and um, you know, name it like literally residential complexes, commercial complexes, factories, etc. Um, and this has been very well received because it's a very simple product. But basically, it's to it was the need of the hour product, you know, to wash your hand before you enter a public place, uh, because you know, washing your hand with soap and water can never replace using a sanitizer, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the challenge that we faced, which is COVID. And we came up, we thought of it as an opportunity and came up with an innovative solution to help everyone uh, in the community by and large. So yeah, that's my, that's okay. my point. <clears throat> Rab, thank you, Koshikin. Thank you, Priyam, because this, what you've answered is absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is something innovative. Uh, in fact, you know, our students are working on a project like this which I would like to share with you after some time. I mean, once we finish up this webinar or we, we, we come down to a place, something different, you know, which we are targeting towards the rural rural market. So if you can help us in that, you know, we have de developed, uh, the, the prototype is de already developed, but if you can help us in that, definitely it will help us, you know, reaching to the masses, not the classes, of course. Okay, sure, that's sure. a different part. Uh, to take it forward, you know, the... Next part which comes into my mind is you are talking about sustainability relationship, right? Or sustainability entrepreneurship, right? Over the years, you are very well known about this. Uh, you have become a well-known figure, a face in this area of sustainability relationship, right? Now, what is your uh, project about this water conservation initiatives, which you have already developed and how they are impacting the social masses? Sure. So thank you for that question. Um, you know, I've, I've told you one story, which was about my UK story, which is very close to my heart. And I, I feel you could see it in my face, you know. Um, I, I literally get transported back when I share that story, um, back to those days. I'll share another story with you, you know, which led me into this water conservation journey. And I love sharing my journey, you know, in small stories, because that's what, you know, uh, relates to everyone. That's your experience that you're sharing with us, of course, right? I understand, yes. right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. please, please. So, um, you know, when I returned back from the UK and um, I joined the family business, um, you know, when I came back for, for like a couple of days, about a month, I was feeling very um, nostalgic about my childhood days. 
and um, I had a nanny at that point of time in my childhood days called Geeta. She was the one who, just like my mother, she was my second mother. Okay. She brought me up, you know. Okay. And now she had already retired back to her village in Sunarpur. So when I came back from the UK, you know, one of the first things I wanted to do was go meet my nanny. You know, I wanted to go say hi to her. I wanted to go meet her, her family, see how they're doing, because it really reminded me of my childhood. So I went back to, I made a day trip to Sunarpur. Um, and, you know, when I reached her village and I met Geeta um, in her little house, sitting with her family, um, it was, it was you know, an overwhelming, you know, thing for me to meet her after so many years. Um, and I was just sitting, chatting with her. And then, you know, her daughter came in and her granddaughter came in with some yellow jerry cans and some buckets. And they said that, um, let's go to fetch, fetch some water. When they said this, I had a very puzzled expression on my face because, you know, having honestly grown up in a privileged setup in, in an urban city like Calcutta, and, and after that, having lived in a first world country like the UK, mm -hmm. you know, access to clean, safe, portable drinking water was something that I never thought about. It was, al it was always available. You open the tap, water comes out, you know. It was very easy, very accessible. So this is not something I ever, you know, thought about. Um, so when her daughter and granddaughter said, let's go fetch water, I was very intrigued. And I was like, okay, what are they talking about? And um, then I asked them and they explained to me that, you know, on a daily basis in rural India, um, there is no piped water access available in every house. Right. And women and children, they have to walk about five to 20 kilometers on a daily basis to go fetch clean, safe, portable water. drinking water. water. Right. And when they said this to me, you know, I was like, I am coming along. You know, I took a jerry can, I took a bucket with them and I made myself useful. So Geeta, her daughter, granddaughter and me, we walked, you know, about, I think, some 12 to 15 kilometers to the nearest tube well to go fetch some water. This experience completely shook me up, you know. When I went back to uh, Calcutta, when I went back to office the next day, I sat with my team to, you know, think of an innovative solution to help my Gita, her family and Gita's village so that, you know, they don't have to face this um, issue of walking every day such long distances to fetch water. So therefore, you know, we came up with an innovative solution after many brainstorming sessions um, of this product called the Patent Water on Wheels which is a roller tank. Okay. This product, it has a handle and it has a lid. Um, and this is essentially, it's a 90 liter water storage tank, which one can roll along the ground to fetch water. So what we did was we uh, distributed this to, um, we tied up with many state governments, such as uh, Binga, Bengal, uh, West Bengal, uh, Urissa, Bihar, Jharkhand and Rajasthan. We also uh, collaborated with various uh, corporates because, you know, corporates have that mandate where they need to do a 2% CSR. So yes. we tied up with many corporates if they would like to adopt villages and, um, you know, to roll this project out. Um, and we rolled out this roller tank to various villages which have water paucity, such yes. as Bakura, Purulia, Bardaman, and... Um, In the Purusam areas, yes. Yeah. And one yes. of the places I'd like to mention is the Bonnie Camp. Uh, Tiger Reserve Forest in the Sundarbans, various right. schools in the Sundarbans as well. Now, you know, right. I'd like to explain the most important thing that what happened when we, uh, you know, launched this product, which is the roller tank versus carrying a bucket of water. Mm -hmm. So earlier, as I mentioned, women would walk uh, five to 10 kilometers, five to 20 kilometers on a daily basis to fetch water. Now with this roller tank, they were walking only once every week to fetch water. That okay. way, they were walking 52 days versus 365 days to fetch okay. water. What did this mean? That so much more time, 365 minus 52, whoever's good at math here, you know, that many days were freed up for women and children to pursue educational and economic opportunities. You know, so, so many women in rural India they became micro entrepreneurs and they started to, you know, make pickles and handicrafts, which they would sell 
So they became micro entrepreneurs in their own right because of so much more time on their hands. Um, and also the attendance of the girl child in schools improved. Besides that, when you know, women would walk such long distances to fetch water, there would be a lot of women's safety issues because they would walk such long distances and by the time they would come back, it would be late evening, it would get dark. So a lot of you know, sexual harassment and those sort of women's safety issues would crop up. But now, you know, like how in rural India, generally it's fetching water is viewed as a woman's task. Men would not help with this you know, job. But now, because the roller tank looks a little bit like a wheelbarrow, men and women both were going to fetch water. This meant there was gender equality. And because men were going to fetch water, what happened was women's safety issues also went down, right? And because this roller tank had a lid and it had a handle, this meant that the water uh, in a bucket, which is not covered, would get contaminated. Half mm -hmm. the water would fall out of that bucket. So, you know, all these issues went away with that roller tank. And also, when, you know, when you carry a bucket on the side of your waist or on top of your head, what happens is this would pose a lot of health hazards yeah, for right. women and children. You know, right. neck injuries, spinal injuries, which meant uh, so much more expenditure. They already don't have money. And so much more expenditure, you know, towards their hospital bills and things like that. So, so many issues from a, you know, socioeconomic standpoint, um, you know, health, education, um, you know, overall empowerment of various communities happened by the introduction of this roller tank. So this was my sustainability project. And, um, you know, thereafter, I'm happy to share that we've been able to touch over 2 million lives. We've been able to do this in 3000 villages across the country. Um, and also we started rainwater harvesting projects um, in various places. And uh, one of the places is the Bonnie Camp at the Tiger Reserve Forest in the Sundarbans. So, you know, if you're interested, I'd like to share about that as well. Um, you know, in the Bonnie camp, this is an area where uh, there is no clean, safe uh, drinking water available because, you know, it's surrounded by salty water. So how would the Bonnie camp get their drinking water? They would need to rely on the mainland to get water. And, you know, uh, there would be like the, the drinking water would come via uh, a steamer from the mainland to, to the Bonnie camp. This meant that there was no readily accessible drinking water on site all year round. But by doing a rainwater harvesting project at the Bonnie camp, there was drinking water available on site 24 seven all year round, you know? And um, this, was, this was amazing for the whole, you know, for that whole area, various schools got empowered. And again, you know, the girl child attendance improved because water is a basic, you know, is a basic necessity for yes. anyone and everyone. So uh, this is a little bit about my projects and I'm very happy to, you know, um, talk to anyone who would be interested uh, to install a rainwater harvesting project in, you know, be it your own home, in your office building, in your factory, in a school, in a college, in any place. You know, it's very simple. All we need to do is uh, go in there, do a Reiki of the site, do an inspection, uh, see if we can do it there. And we can analyze various parameters and do that project. Um, it's very simple, very affordable, and um, it helps to, um, you know, reinvest that rainwater, which otherwise gets wasted. So okay. um, very happy to share more on that. If anyone's interested, we can take that offline as well. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I think this is a fantastic, again, once again, something which is uh, social entrepreneurship, as we call it, right? It's typically social entrepreneurship, as we or what yeah. discuss, right? And the society has been benefited a lot from, 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 your, from your project, from your ideas, right? Asha, one more thing which I would like to ask you, that is, uh, you are in pattern group as one of the, you know, president of the plastic division, as you said, right? Apart from that, you also co-founded another project, which is again, one of your favorite projects, which I have understood, that is, Cafe I Can Fly with your mother, right? Now, again, this is also something which has been started by you in, um, under whose inspiration? Who inspired you for this? How did you come out of this? Because you have been, you know, creators, as you said, you're, you're creating different things, different projects. So I would like to know, my students would, I would like to tell my students to learn from you, how different projects can be created. So if you can just elaborate on this a little bit about this, you know, this journey. 
from ideation to reality about this cafe, cafe I can fly? Sure. So uh, you're asking me all my favorite questions today. So, um, you know, I'm very happy to share again about, uh, you know, a passion project, a pet project, which is very, very close to my heart, actually. So my younger sister, uh, who's eight years younger than me, Prachi, she is a special needs uh, child. She has uh, ADHD, which means attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Uh, she has bipolar disorder and she's got low IQ. So, you know, she is the true inspiration and the drive, the motivation behind um, Cafe I Can Fly. Um, I'd like to tell you about, you know, how Cafe I Can Fly actually started. So my mother, uh, Mrs. Meenu Budhya, she is a psychotherapist and counselor herself. And, you know, the journey and the story that my mom has been through with my sister, it sort of encouraged my mom to start an institute of mental health called Caring Minds. Um, which is a one-stop shop solution for anything and everything to do with mental health for anyone and everyone. Um, you know, and my mom, she looks after this on a daily basis. She's very hands-on and, you know, I try and help her, um, with my little bits and bobs. Uh, I do, I had the new initiatives there. So that's my role in caring minds, but coming directly to your question about the cafe. So, um, you know, so my mom then started an institute called I Can Fly. Yes. which is an institute for special needs individuals. Right. This is essentially mm -hmm. a vocational skill building center. Mm -hmm. So here uh, we train special needs, um, not just, you know, mind you, I'm not saying kids, I'm saying special needs individuals because the youngest individual we have is three years old, but the mm -hmm. oldest one we have is 41. Mm -hmm. And there is no upper age limit. You know, a special needs individual can be 55 can be 65 can be any age so therefore we don't say kids we say special needs individuals um and you know we we also say our tagline is enable the able you know mm -hmm. we don't call them disabled we don't call them handicapped we call them specially abled and we say let's enable the able these are positive words to use um and which is why you know very important for me to share because you know i think loosely you know when we talk we just say you know we don't realize and we just say disabled hair but, you know, it hurts the ones who actually have that issue. Absolutely. So, um, very, very good. so yeah. So, you know, my mother started this institute and uh, we've completed almost, um, you know, six years with this institute. Um, and, you know, uh, and after that, this is located in Maddox Square, Ritchie Park. Uh, mm -hmm. We started, uh, you know, a lot of, we do a lot of activities there from there's dance, yoga, music. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's a craft factory, uh, there's karate, there's sports, lots of things for the special needs only. Um, one of the departments we have is we do bakery and cookery classes for the special needs as well, where we teach them how to make, you know, roasted chirva, jhal muri, crackers, nachos, you know, various, uh, various products. Now, we've participated in various uh, exhibitions in Calcutta where our special needs has made these products, handmade these products with love and they've exhibited and whatever money is earned, um, it's been put back into the cause and, you know, our special kids get a paycheck every month. So, you know, by doing this, it's empowered them, not just financially, but more importantly, you know, emotionally. Emotionally, it's really made them so much stronger, so much more confident. So after seeing the success of our, we call it our I Can Fly food factory, where we used to make all these products, you know? So this was very successful. And after that, uh, especially, you know, Achirva is like, it's very well known in all of Calcutta. So, you know, after the success of this, we thought uh, both my mom and I, we are very passionate about the F&B sector. And we thought, you know, why not marry our love for F&B? along with the special needs, the work we do here, um, into opening a cafe. So that's how we opened a cafe, which is called Cafe I Can Fly. It's a cafe with a cause. It's a cafe run by special needs individuals. I'd also like to make two very important clarifications here. Um, number one, this is not an NGO. This is a self-sustaining social enterprise. Uh, so whatever money is, is earned, it is plowed back into, you know, running of the enterprise for the enterprise and whatever money is earned, it is, it goes to the special needs because we give them a paycheck for their hard work. 
um secondly you know i hear from a lot of people that they say oh you know your mother and you you all run a cafe um which is for the underprivileged i'd again like to clarify that special needs and underprivileged is not synonymous they're two different things you know when you talk about underprivileged you're talking about a certain um you know you're talking about a, an economic background of a person yes, 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 when yes, you talk yes. about special needs you're talking about the intellectual uh difficulties so um you know all our special needs they come from uh regular to middle income you know fam families um and you know we employ them and um, i you know just like to clarify that these special needs they put in their heart and soul into this cafe now what do they do at the cafe they you know meet and greet every customer that walks in they will seat the customer they will hand out the menu card they will take the order um and then they will you know um also sort of you know hand out the feedback form Uh, at the end for your experience um and we the special needs we have about uh, 32 special needs who are at i can fly uh, which is the institute and we have about 6 uh, to 8 special needs who work with us at the cafe they work in two shifts and um, they're both you know uh, male and female we have a very good gender ratio as well um uh, at all our workplaces and we try and you know um a lot of people say that you know um that you know employ more women in the workforce i'm i'm happy to share that actually at i can fly and cafe i can fly um majority of our staff are women you know majority of our staff are women so that's something very happy to share and uh, every customer you know that walks into our cafe including all of you here today um uh, who are hearing me because you're also getting educated and becoming aware about something you know which is very mm -hmm. unique in the city so every mm -hmm. customer who walks into our cafe is called our chua leader um mm -hmm. and um, you yes, know the yes. cafe serves as a 24/7 awareness tool to break that stigma to trash that taboo um about the capabilities and the potential of special needs individuals yes. people think that you know uh, the special needs so you know why waste including the parents uh, of special needs why waste money on them ye to zyada kuch nahi kar payenge zyada nahi pad payenge zyada kaam nahi kar payenge so let's not waste money on them you know this is the mindset that we've all grown up with we've all been conditioned with so here we're trying to break a very important stereotype and a very important stigma that you know have faith in them give them the resources give them the platform they can also do something let them prove you wrong you know so uh, it's a very important cause very close to my heart and uh, my mom is the founder i'm the co-founder of this cafe it's in madox square and um, you know all of you are invited to you know please drop in whenever you have the time uh, for a cup of coffee and uh, you know some really good conversation and meet the special needs it will be a great experience for all of you yeah definitely i will definitely drop in one day I I assure you very soon. Okay. Great, looking forward to, to that. To discuss with you so many things. Okay, that will be on a uh, over a cup of coffee. I'll discuss with with so many other issues. But one thing you know, which I would like to ask you is, how do you scout out this uh, special needs people? How does do the scouting? So you know, like uh, a lot of it, it's basically word of mouth. You know, like I feel that the best tool of uh, a lot of people ask, you know, in management or uh, seminars that. which is the best way of marketing and advertising obviously these days you know social media you one can't ignore social media so of course you know we have um, when we had started out we had put out you know um, awareness material we don't call it promotional material because it's not a business uh, so we call it awareness material about uh, you know what we do on our website on our social media we spoke to our friends our family we spread the word um, you know and that's how um you know one tells the other word of mouth is has always been since times immemorial the strongest marketing tool ever you know so that's how a lot of people got to know first you know one kid joined then another special individual joined then another one joined and you know if they if they see that what you're doing is good um you're well looked after they get confidence then they tell other people and the word spreads and that's how we got uh, so many of them to enroll with us and um they you know they literally they feel blessed that they come here they look forward to every day so it's so uh, it's a very happy place okay okay uh, now request uh, one of our student is again uh, in this uh, there to ask a question uh, so professor ji choudhury he is yes he is yes. raising his hand again he was asked yes sir so, uh, ji ask what about ask ask yes uh, do uh, good evening ma'am uh, do you think Entrepreneurship as a subject is getting more prominence today, post COVID nineteen. 
yes i do think so to be honest because you know like um i feel that uh, since since covid times people a lot of people like you know was was sitting at home and thinking uh, they got a lot of time to themselves you know uh, to introspect and think about their hobbies their passions their interests you know jo life mein kabhi nahi kiya abhi kar lete hai you know it's never too late you know so you are maybe you were never cooked but because you were sitting at home you had some more time you thought chalo let's try let's go to the kitchen and see what i can do so that's how a lot of people um just out of pursuing their hobbies interests passions uh without realizing they had the time to um uh, explore an entrepreneurship within them you know and explore an entrepreneur within them and um, you know a lot of uh, nowadays you hear this word which is called shepreneur homepreneur and mompreneur right like we are these terms so a lot of entrepreneurs got made in their own right um and also i think you know like um, if you've seen the movie three idiots um you know how sort of indian parents always try to you know uh, push their kids towards becoming uh, joining one of those professions where you'll be highly paid um, and make a very successful career uh, say be a doctor or be a professor or be a scientist or be an engineer but you know we've seen over times that how you know even even our parents are becoming so much more progressive minded open minded because of you know institutions like yours calcutta business school shri shikshaitan i mean like you know because we're arranging such amazing courses uh, amazing webinars which are so educative so informative uh, you know about entrepreneurship and how um, anyone and everyone can become an entrepreneur they just need to have that zeal within that enthusiasm um a dream which they want to make into reality and um, obviously you need to have that passion that um if you want to do a 9 to 5 job and then have a great life after that um this is not for you you know so you know like yeah. an entrepreneur someone who it's you are putting in your hard work your money your everything you know it's your baby literally it's your baby so you you know the way you think about your baby 24/7 you know you're very worried if something happens to your baby right so exactly if you're an entrepreneur 24/7 you're thinking about everything you know so if you want a very simple nice life where you know you work 9 to 5 and then you um and, and each to its own each to its own you know uh, some people like that so great for that but some people they they have that thing that um i want to make something of my own be my own boss so then i would just say that if you want to be an entrepreneur please be realistic about it uh you know do know what it means to be an entrepreneur um if you have the idea you know i i think you know you may have 100 ideas but ultimately you have to see your idea has to be realistic um uh, it has to be uh it has to be uh, you know as i think earlier when you mentioned it has to be uh, fitting the smart goals uh, it has to be tangible um it has to solve a real world problem uh you have to have the resources you have to do your research for it um uh, if you feel that you don't have say resources mean a lot of things one could even be financial resources or uh, if you don't have the, the you know the money immediately to fund it you could you could approach friends family there are so many you know external funds as well uh, private equity uh, investors and uh, angel investors and all of that so there are various opportunities uh, if you really want to do it but really it's about you if you really want to do it only then do it otherwise uh, and also you know if you want to be an entrepreneur um you know there's never there's never something to say that um I, i'll do it later if you have a burning idea if you feel realistic about it take the plunge do it now you know rather than later um because you only learn honestly from your best mistake if it didn't work out it's fine because i think a lot you know so many times what we don't talk about and which i have spoken about in this webinar is we like to talk about all the good things in our life but mm -hmm. let's talk about our failures let's talk about our mistakes because mm -hmm. that's what really you know builds us up and that's what really teaches us life so yes that's what makes you learn of course that, thank yeah, you ma'am uh, it was a uh, good learning for us yeah and i think uh, you know that is the thing which you, which makes you to learn really in your life isn't it yes which, which you have learned of course you, as you said uh vinit wants to ask you a question vinit Yes, Vinay, please. 
She was he was waiting for a long time to ask to ask, to have an opportunity to ask a question. Please good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Ma'am, a couple of minutes ago, you have said about your cafe. I can fly. So, uh, for uh, uh, regards to that uh, question, uh, I have a question now. What are the parameters an entrepreneur should consider when they start a new venture? So, uh, hi, Vineet. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, you know, I feel in part I've already answered that question in the previous question. But again, you know, I just like to highlight that you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, please understand uh, yourself first, you know, understand your own personality type, your own nature, uh, do a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, you know, weaknesses, opportunities, threats of your own self. So, you know, if you, you should know your own self, you know, before you take on something that uh, are you a person who likes to work only seven hours a day, give it your best. And that's all after that, after that, you like to do other things. Or are you somebody who's so ambitious, who likes to, you know, who's a workaholic and who likes to create things, there will be so many new problems that will come every day. And you like to creatively problem solve because honestly, entrepreneurship is about creative problem solving. There will be 10 hundred problems that will come every single day. So that's about that. The other thing is um, you should be ready to, you know, literally, as I say, embrace, like embrace failures, mistakes, criticism that comes your way. You know, um, when you do something new, there will be few people who will support you, but there'll be many others who will be like, Ye kya kar rahe? what is this? Like, you know, I don't understand. What is this idea all about? This doesn't make any sense. Um, there'll be many people who will criticize you, try to bring you down, all of that. So, Ultimately, it's you, I, me, myself, it's your own inner faith that's going to work. And um, you need to develop a very, you know, um, have that have that armor that even if criticism comes my way, it's okay, you know, be, be calm, uh, be like the ocean, and you need to be like emotionally resilient. Um, if you, you know, there's something called you should respond and not react. Um, if if some, someone says something to you about your idea, instead of being super aggressive about it and, you know, reacting literally, um, you know, be calm and respond back, you know, be, be resilient. And also having a risk-taking appetite, that's something that every entrepreneur needs. Um, besides that, having, the, having all your resources in place, um, doing adequate research into it. And also I'd like to, you know, say that one of the things that um, every entrepreneur needs to have is... Uh, this acronym, I'll, I'll, you know, sum it up in that, which is called peace. So peace is about, you know, passion. Um, e is about having subject matter expertise. A is about ambition. Um, C is about having the confidence. Um, and E again is, you know, having that zeal to pursue enterprise, endeavor and excellence. Mind you, not perfection, but excellence. So this is my, you know, little toolkit for entrepreneurs and I hope I've been able to answer your question, you know. Yes, ma'am. That's, yes, ma that's wonderfully answered, I should say. Wonderfully answered. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, well, Priyam, there's a last question. I think, uh, I think uh, somebody would like to, like to, I'd like to ask you. Somebody was there. I think uh, he, was, he has written there. Somebody was there? No. He's written there that well. Uh, a woman who has done so many different multiple hats, you know, who is interested in sports and uh, fitness, travel, and so many other issues. <clears throat> what is the advice to our students to maintain that work life balance? How do you balance that? In short, of course. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are muted. Right. Okay, so, um, you know, to maintain a work-life balance, I feel that, um, you know, that, that popular quote that we've been hearing as a kid, that uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And I completely agree with that because if we are only studying or we're only working nonstop, you know, like a machine, you know, even, even like, it, it won't work because, you know, even a machine, needs uh, some fuel to run. Even a car needs petrol to run, right? So everyone needs to be refreshed to keep doing what they're doing at their optimum. Um, so for me, in terms of my work-life balance, um, I feel that 
you know, like the way I do it is, um, I, in fact, with, with my team, I work with various multiple teams at the pattern or cafe or uh, various other projects. So I feel that, you know, making different WhatsApp groups and uh, I leave a lot of messages uh, via voice notes instead of, you know, typed out messages. To, for this is for my internal working because um, see I leave a voice note and then my team picks it up at their so when you call people generally you feel ki so many times you're saying hello 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 and you know the network is bad you can't hear half the thing they're saying half the thing they're not so which is why when you leave a voice note firstly there is a recording of what you're saying the person can play that voice note over and over again right if they didn't understand once they can hear it again and again and they can execute the work you know, so it's very simple. So I like to work with my teams with voice notes. Uh, I leave a voice note, they leave a voice note back. And, you know, that's how we work. It's very smooth. That's um, at work. And outside of work to maintain a work-life balance, I um, actually really practice the attitude of gratitude. Um, so, you know, I maintain a gratitude journal at the end of the day, um, however busy my day was. And every day is so different and so busy and so exciting. But I, you know, have a diary at the end of the day where I write down the three things that made me happy in that day. It doesn't have to be professionally. It could be personally as well. It could be in my family life. It could be in my personal life. But three things which were the highlights of my day, which made me happy, which simply brings a smile to my face. So, you know, when I look back at this diary, uh, one month down the line or five months down the line, it's a happiness diary because it just has all my happy moments and it's, it just fills me up with so much gratitude. So this is something I do every day. Besides that, in terms of fitness, I, um, I'm quite big on fitness actually. So um, I play badminton every single day um, in the winter. And right now we're like, it's getting hot every day. It's very humid. So I swim, I swim, you know, I do like almost 50, 60 lengths every single day. Uh, so either swimming or I go to the gym or I go cycling. Um, so this is what I call my me time. So I've shared with you what I do just to give you uh, a little food for thought, you know, to think about what do you do, which you truly enjoy, which truly makes you happy, uh, which you call your me time. For you, it could be spending time with your friends. It could be uh, reading. It could be writing. It could be uh, sitting in the park all alone. You know, it could be cooking, but it's something which you do, which you indulge in, where there is no agenda attached, where it is just to give you those pure moments of joy. So that is what, you know, and, and you can't quantify these things, you know, uh, that uh, spend half an hour doing it or spend one hour. Some people will spend two hours. Some people will just spend that 30 minutes, but that 30 minutes is needed. You know, that 30 minutes you spend, say, with your parents or 30 minutes you spend playing a board game or meeting a friend for coffee. It'll just light up your day. So, you know, I leave this to you to figure it out what works for you. But uh, I think having a good work-life balance is very important, even if you are a workaholic. Still, you can find that time to do truly for your own self. Because okay. I would say being selfish is not, you know, being selfless is not being selfish at all. So think about your own self. It's very, very important. Absolutely. Well, uh, Priyam, we are, we are running a sort of time, you know. We had almost one, one of two minutes of time we have spent you know, discussing with you. I don't know. Time just fired, you know just went off. Okay. So I now take the, a chance to, you know, uh, request uh, Sumit Sarkar of the first year student to give a take, take away of what we have learned, what they have learned today from you. Sumit, and before that, well, of course, you know, Priyam, thank you. I you know for, for, for accepting our invitation, my invitation or our invitation, and you know, to be here today with us, sharing your views with me and the students and others who are watching you today. We have learned so much things, so many things from you. The students who have learned so many things from you. And I would request you personally to come and visit our campus one day, you know, to spend time with our students you know, so that they become charged with your charging, you know. Thank you so much. I'd love to do that. I'll, I'll arrange yeah. that soon with you. Please, please charge them. You know, that's very important. Sure. Thank you so much for the invitation. And uh, I'll definitely link up with you on this and uh, yeah. plan. Yeah, yes, surely, please. And I'll visit your cafe one day. I'll be there. Please, please. Everyone, everyone who's here on this webinar. Yeah, absolutely. So, Sumit, please, please. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, voice is very low. Voice, voice. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, good evening, ma'am. We are, 
I, Sumit Sagha, student of first year from Calcutta Business School, I would like to give the, give the key takeaways from this meeting. Ma'am, uh, today we are blessed with your presence as you have gave us the, the essence of positivity by sharing sharing, sharing a bright, bright thoughts. Your boldness towards the unforeseen circumstances is very encouraging. Throughout your, uh, your thoughts, we have um, derived some key takeaways. How, how the power of technology has changed the, changed the world by, by shortening the time and distance. Your, your innovative ways, ways of showing, showing, con, uh, showing contactless hand washing techniques in hand washing techniques in public. Mm. The, the innovative solution of carrying what, water that is water on wheels but for the for the rural rural area. Your, your solution of, of drinking water body camp in Sundarban, your, your, your innovation by, by, by starting uh, I, I Can Fly Cafe for, for, for the people with, with the special needs. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I think uh, Sumit has probably lost his connection. Is there in the campus? I think Sumit, are you there? Can I'm audible to you? Yes, sir. Um, thank you. I think uh, I would request now Sumit Khan and Oscar to kindly give both a vote of thanks. I did a very good evening to everyone present here. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of the entire fraternity of CBS. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the core committee members, especially Mr. Saurabh Ghosh, Senior Advisor of the Shiksha Item Foundation, Mrs. Vaitati Bhattacharya, Secretary General and CEO of Shiksha Item Foundation, and our principal, sir, Professor Vijay B. Nimbalkar. I extend my gratitude and thanks to the panelists uh, present here today, Ms. Priyam Budhya. And special thanks to the moderator, our uh, sir, Dr. Pinaki Ranjan Bhattagar. And thankful to our honorable panelists and our moderator, Dr. Pinaki Ranjan Bhattacharya, for today's webinar. I thank them for taking out time from their busy schedule to grace the event and enlighten with their knowledge. With a deep sense of gratitude, I would also like to thank all the professors, faculty members, for always encouraging us in adding value to the education important as CBS. Also, I'd like to thank our technical team, officers, and staff, as we are fortunate enough to be backed by such a team for helping <coughs> to conduct the webinar smoothly. And last but not least, thanks to all of you who are attending the webinar and viewers who are watching it live on Facebook. We appreciate your involvement and thank you for sparing the valley, uh, valuable time for the session. We are sure that by participating in the session, you have gained useful knowledge. Thanks for being our biggest support system. Thank you all very much. With the hope of meeting all of you again very soon, I wish you all a great and a healthy life on behalf of the institute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sushkana. Thank you, Priyam. Thank you once again. Uh, well, thank you. Yes. So, thank you, thank thank you, you. everyone once again. It was a lovely evening uh, to share my views and I look forward to everyone visiting the cafe and I look forward to visiting your campus as well. Yeah, I think that, that, that will be, you know, that infraction should be there, you know. It should, it has started, it should continue for a longer period of time. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Stay safe, stay healthy, more importantly, and stay from this grilling hit, that's more important also. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you too, take care, have a good evening. Thank you, same to you, same, same to you, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.